Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome back to another video. It's Ibrahim Muslim and today I'm back with another video on Hackintosh. So this is one of the best video I'm going to make on Hackintosh and you will definitely love it. So this video is for those who are on Radeon graphics card and on Nvidia graphic card but this will specifically cater Radeon card because they are way more compatible with Mac OS X now than ever before so apple has released imax and mac imac pro and even mac pro with radeon graphics card and for those who are using uh radeon graphic card on their hackintosh there are some incompatibilities with different software so for those who are on radeon rx 400 500 series or on vega 56 64 on hackintoshes they are not able to get the Apple hardware accelerated H.264 compression. So this compression is a really nice technique and it takes almost all of the load away from your CPU and puts it on your GPU to make, a, to make the compression done by GPU. And that conversion is far faster and more reliable than doing this with a software conversion so uh, let me show you the performance and are you truly really getting that or it's not possible so first thing we get the final cut pro error if you do this on vega 64 or vega 56 or on any of the radeon rx 400 500 series <clears throat> you're going here you can say it's a 4k file you can see the resolution and h264 format so what we will do, we will name this file 18kb per second and 4k with Apple hardware acceleration and we will click save and we will see from here we will go wait for preparing media for share and normally the error used to appear here by saying that export cannot be successful or export was not uh, completed or anything related to export or in worst cases which uh, I used to face was my whole system used to hang up the whole system used to just stuck and you have to do a hard reboot to get that thing working and that was extremely annoying for me to be honest and now you can see this is my AMD RX 580 and I'm planning to get another AMD RX 580 because now I am quite satisfied with the performance and you can see the CPU load is close to nothing so your CPU is free from any work and almost everything which is being rendered is rendered on the graphic card and look at this the graphic card is even though utilizing close to 100% its temperature does not go up I, I don't know which kind of processing is going on on, uh, on the GPU but the temperature remains quite reasonable the CPU is on 442x or you can say 4.26 gigahertz and you can see everything is running quite stable so after this thing finishes I will show you a proper test which is done on screen flow and it already shows that this is done on apple hardware acceleration not on software acceleration not on single pass not on multi pass but on apple hardware acceleration and your imac or your super hackintosh crush that like a piece of cake so we are done with our rendering and the thingy completed successfully you can just see share master file was successful and we can click show and you can see this 18 kbs 4k apple havc was successfully made 1.7 so this was a test that apple h264 was working perfectly on amd radio on rx 580 and because this was not even working before not even the software h264 was working before on final cut but now after the fix you will be able to get even the Apple hardware accelerated H264. So how do you know that it's hardware accelerated not the one which is software accelerated like the one we get on other softwares excluding Final Cut Pro because Final Cut Pro kind of don't tell anything about this and if you are not getting H.264 
on Final Cut Pro, then you can use Handbrake to do that thingy. So how do you know that it's legitly working? So there is another test we do, which is on ScreenFlow. And here you can do this up to OK, but no 5K because the ScreenFlow does not support that. And we go here and you can see it's 18 kilobits per second. And here it's hardware accelerated Apple H.264. It's not the normal one, it's the special one. And it does not use the CPU for this. If I do the single one, it will use CPU and it will make my, the CPU crunch the data. But we will do the hardware one and I will show the difference. So let's start with the single one. And if I go here, I double click for the CPU as well. So it stays on the top and we don't need this. So right now we go here and we have selected single pass, which is the normal H.264 format uh, decoding. So we'll click export and you will see the CPU boosting and the GPU is doing the work. But right now you can see the CPU just go boom. Like everything on the CPU is maxed out. And if I click on here, let me close this. You can see the CPU is 250% using the working. It's the CPU resources are huge. So we click cancel here and you will see the CPU usage drop and we will go here again. We'll click export. We'll click here and we'll use hardware accelerated Apple H264. And this time we will name it hardware and let the GPU scales go down, CPU and GPU, and we will click export. And you will see the speed of export is way too faster. The CPU is not maxing out. The CPU is in peace, but the look at the GPU. It's hitting the borders now, 100% usage. So now, right now, you are using the pure GPU power to render your H.264 compression rendering process, which is way more efficient way more faster and may way more suitable for rendering than a cpu rendering so we were able to successfully do this and uh, now you can see the cpu is not heating up and stuff so let's cancel this because i've already shown that it is successful on both of the thingy final cut in here and if you get a random restart during this then you need to just reinstall the latest clever bootloader it will fix that okay so how do we get this thing fixed? It's being a long intro to the video, but there are two things you have to do. One is BIOS related and the other one is Clever Configurator related. Watch it carefully. The Clever Configurator uh, thing is quite uh, complicated or you can say quite hard and you have to do this. So we go here and then we mount our config.plst and I am currently using no boot flags, nothing. And I'm using a boot macOS as my default boot. Zero as a timeout. In boot graphics, I'm using 111 because I'm using a 4K LCD. And in here, I'm using this OX5912 8086. This is important to add because you have to use Intel graphics to get that Apple thingy fixed. So this is for all uh, KB Lake and Sky Lake and Coffee Lake. So you can use this this uh, this is no compulsory graphics section you have to use load v bios you have to use inject intel and you have to use radeon dint so this one is also not used now in mojave but you have to use this if you are using 10.13.6 in rg platform id you have to use 5159123003 if you are on kb lake and if you are on cable lake which is i3 cpu then you have to use 591200 if you are anything above i3 you have to use the 31 and the sm bios of this so in kernel and kex patches these are the patches i'm using this is for fixing the usb i will explain you that later in here you have to use kernel power management apple intel cpu apple rtc and then you have to use the SM BIOS 
and unluckily i have to add some of the stuff you have to use the sm bios of imac 18.3 if you're using a kb lake system you can use 17 if you're on skylake or you can use haswell 114 and here are the options 17 for six generation broadway you can also use for the kb lake with skylake which is 16 and 15 and 14 for haswell and stuff so that depends on your CPU generation. Then in parameters, you use inject system ID, you use inject kext. Down here in kext installer, you have to use this. You have to use whatever green. You have to use Apple ELC for your Apple audio fix. You have to use fake SMC. You have to use inject Intel. The virtual SMC is something new and I will explain this in a new video. So stay tuned and you can add this in 14 10 to 14 or in others folder in install drivers these are the drivers i'm using and i would recommend you if you are on kb lake or broadway or skylake you can use this above ones are almost compulsory everyone get that i'm using apfs file driver loader and optio input fix optio memory fix i'm using hash service fix i'm using nv express dex partition dex and virtual box hfs uh, this is not compulsory but you can use this so that's all you have to do on clever configurator to get your apple hardware accelerated h.264 encoding and decoding so let's restart and i will show you what you have to do for in the bios and i will also explain the bio settings you can use so after this your system will probably boot up quite faster than normal and it will perform very stably for your future and i hope this will help almost all of you out so let's restart so we are in bios now as you can see so from here we have to set our boot options and you have to select your hard drive with which you boot into mac os x you have to disable your fast boot and then here you have to use the initial output as pcie one slot because you're using a graphic card and if you're not using a graphic card then you have to use the igfx and you don't use the es raid onboard controller is enabled you can use anything from here ledc rgb because this is nothing related to hackintosh and in intel platform trust you have to disable this software guard is software control usb DAC up to you can use anything in these settings it's on your I have a Thunderbolt configuration, but leave that away right now because Thunderbolt on Hackintosh motherboard does not work. Then, offboard SATA controller configuration can be set, but allow that. Trusted computing is enabled and network stacks are disabled. And Intel BIOS Guard technology is also disabled. You go in NVMe configuration, I'm having a Samsung 512. USB, you have to use legacy USB support enabled, XHCI enabled, USB mass storage enabled, port N64 emulations enabled. In SATA configuration, you have to use AHCI, SATA controllers enabled, aggressive low power management enabled. Then we go to chipset, you have to use VTD, virtual, virtual threading or whatever this is enabled. You have to use internal graphics enabled. And here in DVMP pre-allocated, you can use 128 MB. That one is most stable among these, but I was testing and I found out that 128 MB, 256 MB and 512 MB just work perfectly. So I just wanted to stay in metal. So I selected 256. In DVMP total graphics memory, I select max. Audio control is enabled. Everything here is enabled. Platform power management, I just don't want to use that. So I Put it disabled you can use that but i just found out that i feel that it is kind of breaking or crashing hackintosh sometimes i use rc6 render standby and it enables or it helps uh, mac to sleep properly that's the setting i use and that's all with the settings and then you can also save the settings with best or whatever name you want to say and then you can restart so let's restart our system so right now you can note the time it will take from the boot up to desktop so it's 314 the system restarted and it's 
320 when the thingy clever loaded and let's see and 326 when the apple logo appeared so it's almost 10 seconds to load the boot or the mac os x on a nvme ssd and i think that's quite reasonable then you have to enter your password if there is no password it will boot up right into the system and then you can see it's morning and after the restart i just want to make sure that everyone understand that we will open our final cut pro again this video is getting long but let's do it and right from here without any changes we'll select master file because we have already changed hella stuff it's 4k it's h.264 i can zoom in and we can press next we can name it testing 2 and we can press enter and where is this thing and we can click here and it's sharing so you can see it's sharing quite well everything on a hack and tosh so it's close to 62 percent and we can minimize this and come on where is it so let's minimize this and we go to our about this mac here you can see the specifications all right and here is my hackintosh running i just take all of it out and i was just planning to buy a new casing so so this is my temporary setup but rx580 is serving me quite well and it performs excellent the mac os x uses the gpu excellent on this thing so we can go here gpu history so GPU is quite well utilized. AMD GPU is not NVIDIA's. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. And hope this thing helped you out. So for anything, any help or any query, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer the maximum questions I can do in a limited time because I kind of have a hard schedule. And I will really appreciate, I will really love that if you people support me on Patreon so I can buy new hardware, new stuff to diagnose and check how well this thing performs on Hackintosh and find new ways to make Hackintosh more optimized, more stable and more a workable machine for your work, for your editing, for your music production and anything. So feel free and feel proud. To support me to share the video to the friends and family who would love and appreciate to watch this video so that's all for this video guys once again thanks for watching hope you liked it hope you enjoyed it and until the very next video please take care allah hafiz